Welcome to Learning to Code with Python, Lesson 4. Today we're going to talk about loops and do a little bit more drawing with turtles. Okay, for this lesson, let's get back to Fred the turtle. So I'm going to import my turtle and create the turtle window. All right, and remember how we changed Fred's shape? I'm going to do that again, too. OK. So now let's say, with Fred, we wanted to draw a square. What would we need to do? What are the steps? Well, we need to go forward a certain amount. Let's call it 100. Then we need to turn to our left 90 degrees. right? And then we need to do that same thing again for that side of the square. Turn left, turn left, and there we go, we drew a square. Now that was a lot of typing to do just to draw a square. And if you noticed, we were typing the same thing a bunch of times, weren't we? We had to type forward and left, forward and left, forward and left. We're doing the same thing over and over. And actually, if we wanted to get back to the exact same place we started, we should put another left here. And if there's one thing that programmers hate, it's having to type the same thing over and over again. Computers, on the other hand, can't get tired or bored, so there must be a better way. The better way is to use something called a loop. A loop is a way to tell the computer to repeat some commands over and over. In this case, we want the computer to repeat these two commands forward and left, and we want it to repeat them four times. One, two, three, four. So we want what's called a counting loop. We want the computer to count to four, and each time it counts, to repeat these commands. Here's what a counting loop looks like. First, let's do reset so that we don't have our square we already drew there. And now let's type the loop. We're going to say four i in range 4. And what this command means is, I want you to count to 4. That's what range 4 does. And for each number, which we're going to use i to stand for the number, for each number in that range of 4, I want you to do something. And this colon tells the computer some commands are going to come after this. The commands that come after that colon are the ones that you're going to repeat. So I'm going to press Enter. And notice it didn't do anything yet. It's waiting for me to type what commands it wants to repeat. So we're going to say fred.forward100, fred.left90. And then we're going to press Enter. And notice it's waiting for me to type a third command if there was a third command I wanted to repeat. But there isn't. So I'm going to press Enter one more time. And there we go. We have a square. And that's what a counting loop looks like. Now I want you to notice a couple of things about how this loop looks. Notice that the two commands that we wanted to repeat, see how they're indented? There's space here. They're not lined up with the F in 4. In Python, that space, that indenting, tells the computer that these commands aren't by themselves. They belong to this loop. They're part of it. They're the things that the loop, after the colon, is looking for that it wants to repeat. So what we've done is we've taken these eight commands that we had to type to draw a square, and we've turned it into only three. That's a lot less typing. But watch what else you can do with loops. Let's erase that. And let's say that this time, I want you to count to eight. And then each time you're going to go forward, 100, and you're going to turn left. 225 degrees. What do you think that's going to draw? Well, let's look. If we did those one at a time, that would have taken 16 separate commands. So let's look a little more closely at what's going on inside of one of these counting loops. Now you remember we have this letter I here. 
this i is actually a variable. And each time we go through the loop, i is being set equal to the number that we're currently counting. So what if I count to 5, and each time I just print out what i is? See? And don't forget, we always start counting at 0, right? So i was equal to 0 the first time through the loop. The second time through the loop, it was equal to 1, and so on. So to count to 5, or to run the loop 5 times, we counted 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So what this means is we can use that letter i, the variable that's keeping track of the counting through our loop. We can use it in our loop. So let's reset, and let's try an example. So let's say we're going to count to 20. And then each time through, we're going to go forward, not a certain amount, but 10 times i. So that means the first time through the loop, we're going to go 10 times 0, then the second time 10 times 1, then 10 times 2, and so on. And then in between each one, we'll turn left 90. So it kind of looks like the square, except every side is not going to be the same size. So let's look what that does. This is a good time to talk about how fast, or in this case, how slow, Fred draws. You saw how long it took to draw that. Well, there is a command called speed that will let you tell Fred to go faster. This number can be anything from 1 to 10, with 10 being the fastest. Or you can use my favorite, which is 0, which basically just says, don't animate Fred moving at all. Just draw the thing I told you to draw. And for this next example, that's what I'm going to use. OK? So first, let's reset, and then we'll set the speed to 0. And now for this example, I'm going to count to 50. And each time, I'm going to draw a circle. And that circle is going to be i times 3 in radius. And then in between each circle, I'm going to turn left just 10 degrees. And watch what this draws. Pretty neat, huh? So you can do some pretty amazing stuff with loops. Let's see a few more examples. Unfortunately, after you reset, you do have to set the speed again. OK, let's try this one. Now before we draw this time, let's add a little color. And I'm going to make the line a little bit thicker so it'll be easier to see. OK, so we're going to count to 20. And then we're going to draw a circle, i times 3. But this time, we're going to put another thing in the parentheses, 180. And when you draw a circle, the first number is how big the circle is going to be, just like we've done before. But then you can put a comma and then how much of the circle to draw. So 180 degrees is half a circle. So we're going to be drawing half circles. And then we're going to turn right 45 degrees. OK. Now that one and this next one I'm going to show you are both shapes that were invented by students who have taken my class before. We like to call this one the rose. So let's reset. We'll set our speed back up to 0. And this time, how about we do green? And we'll set the width again so it's a nice fat line to draw with. OK, so we're going to count to 100. And then we're going to go forward, oops, forward, i times 2. We're going to draw a circle, i times 2, but only 90 degrees of it, which is a quarter circle. And then we're going to turn right 20 degrees. Remember, this was actually discovered by a student just experimenting and trying different things. Let's see what that looks like. Pretty cool. So now it's your turn. See what you can draw. Try different things, put different commands in the loop, change the numbers around, experiment. 
see what you can make. And I'll see you in the next lesson.